Hello YouTube, Jay Murphy here with another episode of Murphy's Law. This is a very special episode for me. This is the Portland Retro Gaming Expo episode. Um, it's a big, huge retro gaming convention in Portland over Saturday and Sunday. Uh, tons and tons of vendors and sellers selling all kinds of awesome games. And There's a, a free play arcade. The, it was just massive, massive. I loved it. Um, so this is going to be a compilation video of the stuff I got there, a pickup video of the stuff I got there, as well as some game footage, and uh, there's all kinds of other stuff for you, so I hope you enjoy that. Uh, just a pre-warning, the sound on my camera that I was using to film, uh, the mic is kind of pointed out, it's like a, like a built-in boom mic almost, it was pointed outward, so it picked up a lot of ambient noise and uh, kind of drowned me out, I'm going to be tweaking that as best I can, so just bear with me when, you, when those clips play. Uh, but the days leading up to the expo, I was so happy I was doing a little game hunting. So I do have a couple of thrift store finds here. I like this all separated. Um, and, okay, there. So I did have a couple of thrift store finds a couple days before the uh, the expo. I picked up uh, another copy of NHL 94 for a friend. And I picked up a copy of Gun and GameCube for a friend. But the games I got for me uh, was Rolling Thunder on Nintendo. For made by Tang in there. Uh, this is a really, really fun game. I had a lot of fun with this when it was in the arcade. Uh, you get two hit points and a finite amount of ammo. Everyone dies in either one or two shots. Um, and it's just super fun to run through and uh, see how far you can make it. I've never actually beaten it, but it's a really good game. And then I picked up a copy of uh, DuckTales on the Nintendo. This is a double for me. I already had it, so this will be up for trade if anybody's interested. So yeah, those were what I was able to find at thrift stores before the convention. Uh, and now I'm going to throw some game hunting footage at you, so enjoy that, and we'll get back with my pickups in just a second. Murphy's Law on the Road Edition. I uh, don't know if you can see that, but it is 6.41 in the morning, and I am on my way to a McDonald's in Portland to meet a bunch of other YouTubers before we attack the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Um, this portion of Murphy's Law will be taken with my cell phone, so I don't know how good the video camera is, and since I'm watching the road, bam, I have no idea if you can even see my face right now. But that's what it is. So I will be checking back in with you guys when we actually get to the convention. It's uh, Murphy's Law here at PRGE, Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Uh, just waiting in line, waiting for it to start. A bunch of people up there, a bunch of people there. Here with a couple fellow YouTubers, Cynical and Digma. Dynasty Warrior 6. Yeah, man. Uh, first time meeting them in real life. We met at McDonald's earlier this morning. And we're just waiting in line to get in. So uh, once we get to the actual place, I'll check back in with you. Alright, so we are in the convention center now after waiting in line. And Sin Man here is playing Zippy the Porcupine on Atari 2600. Uh, Apparently it's a demo. Pretty good uh, sound emulation, actually, for an Atari game. Like stuck in ball form there. That's uh... a. <laughs> Fucking darn good, damn it. Game over. That's pretty cool. I would totally buy this. We've got a. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me over all the noise. We've got a living room set up with board games, some cheesy 70s furniture, a nice cheesy TV. Old school Nintendo. A nice collection of the games there. Both Zelda's, Mario 3, Contra, Duck Hunt. Audio screwed up in this track. I can't really hear me over the background noise, so I decided to dub over it for you guys. Uh, what you're looking at is the Retron 5. Um, it's a compilation emulation system that's coming out in December. It plays Famicom, Super Famicom, Genesis, Mega Drive, um, Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy games. The controller's Bluetooth and wireless, and it's just going to be freaking amazing. All right, doing some live game hunting for you guys. At, uh... Portland Retro Gaming Expo. A lot of fair prices here. Mostly common stuff, but not bad. So 
sorry about the focus.
we've got some really fair prices here, guys. This is, uh, if you're looking for good deals, this is the convention to come Look at that. Star Fox 64 for $10. Try finding on eBay for that price. It's ridiculous. These people are, uh, they're Look at that. Fair. Three dollars for Vector Man. Found me a copy of the Dragon Power, that's the American version of the Dragon Ball game. Four bucks. I'm gonna buy that. I'm uh, still looking through a bunch of Nintendo games, Atari games. Ninja Gaiden 2 for five bucks. Ninja Gaiden 2 for five bucks. Look at that. 20 bucks for Mega Man 4. 20, Mega Man 4. That's a good freaking deal. Uh, so I'm gonna hope you enjoyed that footage. Um, unfortunately, it's not as much as I would have liked to get, and there was not a lot of live pickups on it, mainly because every time I saw something good, I forgot to turn the camera on because I'm an idiot. So it was a lot of stuff that I was looking at. Um, but yeah, so that's why there wasn't a lot of, oh, wow, I'll get this kind of stuff because I just forgot. But we'll get right into these pickups. So the first game, as you saw in the video, was that I picked up was Dragon Power. And I kept the price tags on most of these so I could show you guys. Uh, four bucks. Not bad. Uh, it's about average for this game, but I haven't ever been able to find it locally, and I really wanted it. This is actually a Dragon Ball game. This is the American version of the Dragon Ball game that came out. It's based on the uh, the first series. You can tell all the, ki the character looks like Goku. Uh, they changed his hair a little bit for the American version, I believe. Uh, but Bulma's in there. Uh, you're looking for dragon crystals, and so yeah, this is a this is a Dragon Ball game renamed Dragon Power. Um, it's okay. It's not the best game, but it's one I wanted for the collection. So that was the first thing I picked up. Um, and let's see, the next booth, I went to a couple other booths. Wasn't liking the prices I was seeing. Uh, I stopped at this little independent booth because there's a lot of uh, game stores, like local game stores who bring their stock in to sell. Um, and most of the time, those are the ones that are a little bit higher priced. The independent booths, the ones that aren't really affiliated with a store, they might be a store, they just weren't advertising it, are the ones who are really willing to haggle. And they really... Uh, so I got some really good deals. So I got these three games from one booth. I got uh, Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. Uh, this completes my Nintendo Castlevania collection. I've got all three now. I was able to get uh, Chippendales Rescue Rangers. Love, love, love this game. Really, really fun. Another uh, Disney Capcom game. And like I've said in numerous videos, those are always awesome. Then I was able to pick up uh, Tailspin. Came with a dust sleeve and the instruction manual. Uh, the instruction manual's got a sticker that might be a little hard to get off of. The stickers on the game should uh, come off pretty easy, and then I can goo gone the residue gone, and then Sharpie I'm able to get off as well. Just gotta take them apart to do that. So these three games together, they were asking 29. They had uh, Castlevania at 14. Oops, sorry. And they had Chippendales at nine, which by the way was cheaper than I I've, I've seen in the convention. Everyone else wanted 11 or higher for their for their Chippendales, so. If you go to one of these, make sure you shop around. Don't just buy the first copy of the game you want, especially if you're there the first day early. Uh, it really helps to shop around and look. Uh, and then Tailspin was six. So that was 29 total. I handed a stack. Like I said, these guys love to haggle. I hand them a stack. I said, hey, how about these games for 25? They said, mm, how about 26? I took it. So saved three bucks. And again, I got these games cheaper than I've seen them at the entire convention. So very, very happy to have those. Those are all new for my collection. Um, then let's see, I got some stuff, this, oh, there we go, I got, uh, I got a complete unboxed copy of, uh, X-Men for the Genesis, bam, uh, it's pretty good condition, no tears or anything in the manual, uh, that was ten bucks, uh, it's probably one of my favorite Sega Genesis games, I was gonna try and find a copy of X-Men 2, but I couldn't, uh, but this is definitely one of my favorite Sega Genesis games, you get to pick between Five different of the mutants, I believe, four or five, and then there's another four or five uh, helpers. Like Iceman can make a bridge. Uh, Jean Grey picks you up if you fall off the stage. It takes a little bit of your health. Um, these games are side-scrolling, beat-em-up action games, and it's just really, really fun. Absolutely love this game. Very happy to have that, especially complete. Um, then, let's see. These games came from the second day. Um, I got uh, Yonoid for the Nintendo. That was five bucks. Uh, very happy to have that. You wouldn't think a game based on a uh, pizza delivery icon would be would be good, but it is. I like it. It runs around with a little yo-yo uh, platform action game. Very, very fun. Then I got, uh, sorry, I have the name backwards, Barker Bill's Trick Shooting. 
Uh, for the Nintendo, there's a light gun game. It's got a bunch of little mini games like the uh, there's like shooting balloons, shooting saucers that they throw them into the air. Uh, it's it's just good. It's good. I got that for three dollars. There's no price tag. The guy was actually going. He's like, here's a box of stuff I haven't priced yet. And this is the only thing that kind of jumped out at me. So I picked those up from another booth uh, at the same time for eight. Not bad in my opinion, anyway. Um, let's see. I did pay pretty much retail for one game. Um, at Nightmare on Elm Street for the Nintendo. This is one I've been wanting for a while. I absolutely Nightmare on Elm Street is probably one of my favorite horror series or my favorite horror stories. Period. Um, so it was get that up a little closer. It was twenty four ninety nine, but it was a game store, and they're giving ten percent off of everything because of the convention. So it was like twenty two, and then in Oregon there's no tax, so it was just like flat twenty two or whatever it ended up being twenty two fifty. I'm not that good with math. Um, and then so it was. A dollar or so cheaper than I've seen. Every other booth had it at like 24 period. And uh, those other booths also didn't have anything I wanted to bundle with because you can't really haggle over one game. Uh, it's when you hand them a stack of games that you can really argue the price. So I got, uh, yeah, I got that. Nightmare on Elm Street, 24 99 Knocked down to 22 after the 10%. Love this game. It, this and Maximum Carnage are probably the only good LJN games, you know. That stupid company that makes licensed games and really is bad at it. Uh, but I absolutely love this game. Um, let's see. Then also on the second day, I got a stack of games from one booth. Uh, the second day, people are willing to like sell and haggle. They don't want to. They want to sell as much as possible and leave, taking as little back as they can. Um, so I picked up. I was looking around. There wasn't much the second day. All, like all the big titles were gone. All the stuff I was looking for was gone. So I did stop by with this one booth. Uh, when we first got there, the guy was like, "Anything that's priced is wrong. Uh, those are my storefront prices. I'm not charging storefront prices for these games." So I looked through his stuff. I picked out a couple. Uh, first is Codename Viper for the Nintendo. Uh, this is almost identical to Rolling Thunder. Uh, in the gameplay style, but the graphics and the sound and the controls are better because uh, Capcom made really quality games back then. So I really, really, really am happy to have this. Um, I tested all these and played them last night. Uh, this is actually one that I hadn't played, but I figured I was on a Capcom roll. I mean, I got Chip and Dales. I got a DuckTales a couple days before. I got the Tailspin. Uh, so I figured, why not pick up one more Capcom game? And this one is very, very good. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I'll be playing it uh, some more very soon. And then I got a couple Genesis games. I got uh, Separation Anxiety for Genesis Loose. Um, this is kind of a follow-up to Maximum Carnage, and it's in the same style of gameplay. Not as good as Maximum Carnage, in my opinion, but it's still a solid game, and I enjoy it. Then I got Sonic 3. Label's a little, uh, a little faded, a little dark. Um, it's not as bright as it used to be, but uh, it's the only Sonic I needed. Now I've got 1, 2, 3, and Sonic and & Knuckles for the Genesis, so that made me happy. And then last but not least, I picked up E.T. for the Atari. I don't have an Atari, but I thought, why wouldn't I want to own the worst game ever made? So that's, I picked that up. And then so those four games, they only cost me $8, meaning I paid $2 a piece. Uh, and that's not bad for games like Sonic 3. So very happy about that. Um, let's see. I stopped in and said hi to Mel the Office Gamer Girl. Some of you out there might know her. Uh, she did a series a while back on uh, Overlooked Games, um, and she sells pixel art, and she has another YouTube series where she eats weird things, but I went, stopped at her booth to say hi, and she said, hey, you want a copy of Dragon Ball Z Budokai? I said, sure, why not? So, oh, Budokai Tenkaichi. I didn't even know. So that is just loose inside a random generic case, uh, but that was free, so I'm not going to argue with free games. Very happy to have that. Um... Then I was at Retro Liberty's uh, panel, and they were doing video game tri or video game music trivia. Uh, I was kind of in line at the end when they were uh, running out of time, so they're just kind of giving people the answers. Uh, my song was the Duke Nukem theme. I didn't recognize it. I know, huge gaming fail, whatever. But they're like, here's a hint. He kicks ass and chews bubblegum. I was like, oh, Duke Nukem. So I, they kind of threw me the win. I don't care. I'll take it. Uh, they had a, a table of just random games that they were giving out, uh, so I got a copy of Primal Rage for the Super Nintendo. I'll clean that Sharpie off. I didn't own this one, so for uh, waiting in line and listening to an awesome panel, uh, really happy to have that in the collection. Then I have one last pickup, and again, I paid pretty close to retail for this, but it was the cheaper of the retail bunches. So I picked up a copy of Mega Man 2. Uh, it was 24 even. 
Again, it was the only game at the booth, so I didn't want to haggle, but it was a really nice copy. The label's in really, really good condition. Um, the chip works. I popped it in last night. It works just fine. Very, very happy to have this. Um, again, like I said, I paid 24 so it's a little close to retail, but it's uh, probably my favorite Mega Man game, and I didn't own it, so I just was like, screw it, I'm splurging. Now, side cool thing, then, and it's the reason I'm holding the game so awkwardly, actually. I didn't want to review this until now. The man who did the American box art for this game had a booth there, um, and he's done tons of box art. I didn't, I honestly didn't even know about this guy. Some of you may not know about this guy, but he was there um, selling prints to all the box art that he's done. Um, and I saw Mega Man 2. I was like, whoa, you drew Mega Man 2? He's like, yeah. Uh, so I had him sign it for me. So now I have a copy of Mega Man 2 signed by Mark Erickson, who is the guy who did this box art. Um, I looked him up. I tried to look him up. He doesn't have a Wikipedia page, oddly enough. He has a uh, he has a website. I'll be posting links in the description there. Uh, really cool guy, older gentleman. Uh, was a combat vet, so anything military, he really loved to draw. Uh, and then I walked. Uh, I found a couple interviews from last year's Portland Retro Gaming Expo where he's talking about the Mega Man and the the pistol. Why he has a pistol. So he said Capcom called him. He went into the American offices. Uh, and they had a beta version of the game. And so he asked the art director, he said, hey, what is, what is he shooting? And the art director said, well, it must be a pistol because he doesn't have a rifle. So that's why he drew a pistol. Capcom said, Mega Man's using a pistol. Not really his fault, so don't blame that guy. But still very, very cool to have this signed by the guy who drew the artwork on it. Now, uh, if I can ever find Mr. Inafune and have him sign this for me. This would be probably the holy grail of my collection, but right now I'm super, super pleased to have this. Um, so those are my pickups. I've got one more that's coming a little bit later in the uh, later in the video that has a uh, has a video to accompany it. So Portland Retro Gaming Expo was definitely more than sellers. Uh, there was a couple of chiptune bands there, and there was a huge arcade. I got. Um, I got a couple shots of the arcade. Hopefully they're in focus. The camera I was using doesn't have autofocus, so I had to twist the lens, and sometimes I screwed up shots, as you probably saw in the game hunting footage. So I'm going to roll that arcade footage for you and let you see how many uh, games there were. All right, guys. Sadly, this is another clip that was drowned out by the uh, the background noise, but this is the pinball side of the supercade, as they called it. Um, had to have been at least... 30 pinball machines just on that uh, that side alone, and around the corner here is is a ton more, uh, and everything from current to old. Not as much as I experienced at the Northwest Pinball and Arcade Convention, um, but still a ton, a ton of pinball machines, all on free play. A ton of arcade machines. Um, trying to get a shot of everything here, but um, I'm very new to filming with a actual camera, so this was a little difficult for me. There you see Dig Dug. Um, can't really make out what that game is because I'm a horrible cinematographer. A couple of light gun games, Joust, a ton of old games. These are all on loan for personal collectors or uh, Ground Control brought them in, which is a uh, arcade and bar for adults in Oregon and Portland there. Um, shot of the floor, so sorry about that. A couple of tabletop machines. Um, F1 maybe. Ugh, sorry about the Spy Hunter. Just tons and tons and tons of machines. They even had a rush, a rush set up there. Um, and then yeah, this is the console free play area. Uh, tons of consoles. Everything 64, um, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. This is just. Uh, all of them. Turbo graphics you saw there. You know, a couple people will be pleased to see that. Atari. Regular Sega. You can hear Sonic in the background a little bit there. Um, 32X. Jaguar. Virtual Boy. Uh, some Pong machines. Coleco, I think. Um, Nerd Dance Break!
hope you were as entertained by that video as I was. Watching it live was even better. Uh, props to those guys for having the balls to stand up and dance in front of a crowd, though. Um, so, like I said earlier, I have one more pickup for you guys. Um, it's not super rare or anything. I didn't save it at the end because it's super rare. I saved it because of who it's from. So let me just show you the video first, and then we'll show you the game. I'm here with Rob, director of the Nest Club. Probably the best documentary ever made, or to be made. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll be posting links to that. We're about to do a huge trade for Tetris and Dr. Mario uh, from my bag of random common bullshit. Now, Jay, from what I understand, this is the last Tetris game you need to complete your collection. No, that's not even close. Oh, I thought you No, it's just, it's one I need. It's one of them. I need Tetris Attack still. Okay. And then, uh... The random like PlayStation ones and Dreamcast. Okay. But so you brought me your extras here. I did. And I have this game for you. Yes. How about we make it fair? There's two games on here. There's two games I got an eye on. Okay. Thinking Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one, since you've got a couple. I do have a couple. It'll be hard to part with. And then Tetris 2. Deal. Is that a deal? That is a deal. All right. So I will put this in here for you. I will score Tetris 2. I think it's on top here. Right here. And. Oh. One's the Mega Drive box. I don't know where that came from either. Same game. Yeah. Just a different box. Well, I'll take the one with the official Genesis seal of quality. <laughs> I like it. Tetris 2. All right, so as you saw from the video, the last pickup I have is Tetris Dr. Mario. It's another game for my Tetris collection. As I've said a couple of times before, I'm trying to go for a complete Tetris collection. Uh, so I th all I need is Tetris Attack, and that'll finish off Super Nintendo. I've already got all of them for regular Nintendo, and then I can move on to the next set of systems to try and collect those games for. Um, so I didn't really talk about it much in the video, but that was Rob McCollum. McCallum, uh, I'm fucking up your last name, and I apologize. Uh, he is the director of a documentary called The Nest Club. Uh, I've talked about this in one of my other videos. I just did a straight plug for him, but I'm going to talk about it again here. This documentary is so important to us collectors and us gamers. Um, if you don't, if you don't already, go onto Facebook. I'm going to post links to everything related to this documentary down below. If you don't already, go onto Facebook, like them. Um, so just a quick breakdown. The documentary is twofold. It focuses on one man's journey to try and collect all 700 retail, that means no Bible adventures, uh, Nintendo games. But here's the catch. He has to do it in 30 days. He has to do it with his own money. He has to do it with absolutely no online sales. So nobody's feeding him money. None of the money from the documentary or the documentary's Kickstarter went to this guy. This guy's out of pocket. He works a straight 9 to 5, um, and he's trying to buy every single Nintendo game. Everything in his collection at the start of the documentary doesn't count. He had a hundred and some change games at the start of the documentary. Those don't count. He's got to start over from zero and try and buy all 700 Nintendo games in 30 days. Um, as a collector, as anybody who likes pickup videos like these, this is like the ultimate pickup video. If you enjoy watching anybody, you should, you'll should you enjoy watching this documentary. Um, but not only is it that journey, that man's journey to find all the games, but it is also a, uh, a look at the Nintendo as a system, the Nintendo Entertainment System as a whole, and how it have impacted the world of gaming, how, you know, like, arcades were on the decline, uh, video games were on the decline, nobody wanted Atari anymore, so Nintendo comes out, and it's like, wow, like, compared to Atari, those graphics were amazing. Like, this was a huge generation jump from Atari to Nintendo, and now people could finally have the arcade experience in their home, especially with accessories like the light gun. Um, so there's tons of interviews with... Uh, you know, industry uh, professionals and people who have been involved in gaming, people like Billy Mitchell, um, the guy from the Twin Galaxy whose name escapes me at the moment, and I'm sorry for that. Um, but yeah, so it's just filled with tons of interviews, tons of information, and then as well as on the side, watching this guy try and buy all the games. So as somebody who collects, as somebody who likes video games, this should excite you. If you're not excited by this kind of documentary... I don't know what will. Uh, you know, there's already been a couple, like there's the King of Kong that focuses on King, you know, on the, the King Kong championship back and forth. But this is just straight about collecting and how much 
people love the Nintendo. So if you love the Nintendo, you need to be watching this documentary. Um, so I got a couple other things. I, uh, I've been following this documentary since the Kickstarter started. I didn't have a lot of money when it was going on, so I threw the guy five bucks. It'll get my name in the credits. I'm going to buy the Blu-ray day one when it comes out. Uh, so I brought a copy of Super Mario Brothers for him to sign, so the director signed it for me. And I actually got the, uh, the other guy who's collecting the games, Jay. I got his address, so I'm going to send this out for him to get, get signed for me. And then he was selling these prints, but he gave me one for free because of how much I th awesome I think he is. Uh, and I do. I think this is a, an awesome endeavor, and I think it's an awesome movie. And you guys really, really need to check this out. I'm sorry for talking so much long about it. Um, they showed a trailer at their panel. I was super excited for that. But you guys need to check out the NES Club, the NES Club. It's fantastic. It's going to be amazing documentary. All right, so that's about going to do it from this video. I hope you enjoyed the, um, the game footage or the footage. I hope you enjoyed uh, the pickups. Uh, if you ever get a chance and you are a collector, you need to go to this thing. Uh, Portland Archive Game Expo happens every year around the same time, but you need to absolutely go to this thing. It is fantastic. Uh, so many things. And I know what I got wasn't very rare. Uh, I had a finite amount of money. I think I spent about 100 and, uh, 140 or so um, with the stuff that I showed you guys. Uh, but they had like they had a there's a vendor selling a complete in box Ducktales two I think it was like he wanted three hundred for it there was a Snow Brothers loose um, box games out the wazoo I you know I'm not really a box collector and like I said I had a finite amount of money so I went for uh, quantity over uh, rareness I'm not gonna say quality because all the games I got are pretty quality in my opinion so I went for quantity over over uh, you know rareness uh, but there was tons and tons of games a couple of the guys that uh, you see at the beginning of the video that I was hunting with. Uh, one of them found a Castlevania 4 for 20 bucks. Uh, there was a TMNT 4 uh, for 20 bucks. You know, so all these, you know, there's deals. There's lots of deals. Um, you just got to be willing to hunt. You got to be brave enough to haggle. And you got to be patient enough not to impulsively buy the first game that you want that you see. Shop around first. Um, hopefully, it'll still be there when you get back. You know, it's a it's a risk, it's a gamble, it's exciting, but it's so fun. And I, uh, like, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, as always, fight evil, play video games.